as as we've progressed in time and a, b- a big part of our conversation was about uh, disclosure and connecting in with different different races and the IEL being at that time was the most likely race for us to um, have this this idea of disclosure within the uh, the human collective. Are we still on that timeline or is the IEL still uh, our closest in line for um, breaking the ice, so to say? We are, you could say, in a tie with Pleiadian energy among others. Okay. Among others, can you name some of the others? No names only. Can we say that? In those cases, you will find that there is a great physical likeness to yourselves and this is one of the ingredients on which the decision of what species will be quote unquote first in that case is being made i see because we wish for a smooth introduction if we would start with for instance the octopi races that right. we are also in contact with, we understand that that might backfire. Yeah, that could scare some people. Uh, or the mantises or, you know, some of the other... For instance, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, so with this uh, ramp up of the discussion, uh, also comes a ramp up of agendas, as I mentioned before. And it's becoming quite clear for me that... The uh, disclosure narrative is being steered to allow certain voices in and certain voices are kept out. And this is in alignment with all of the censorship and different narratives that are being pushed out in our human collective about other things. So the disclosure topic is also being heavily controlled and censored. And this push for a negative oriented idea of of what they are, a threat, so to say. That's the word that's being used quite a bit in the collective news media broadcast of disclosure. How do you see that developing in the coming years? Do you think the threat card will be played more? We know here in this group that that is not the truth, but how do we help our fellow humans move and navigate through the idea of disclosure being a threat. Thank you for this question. We understand. Thank you. (laughs) So first of all, when you speak of narratives, Mm storylines, censorship, and so on, you are looking at a acceleration of energy vibrations that were already present in your collective. You are pushing to the surface that which, in a sense, is no longer working for you and making it obvious to yourselves. The idea of an increasing set of bureaucratic rules, strict guidelines and storylines that are pushed into a certain direction, even though intuitively you feel that that for you, perhaps as an individual, is not truly with the flow or not in alignment with your integrity, invites the human species to step up their game, in a sense, and allow more transparency through each and every single one of you. You are all, as individuals, invited to become of the energy frequency of that which you would like to see more of in the world, even though a tiny few, because really that is what you are dealing with, are, you could say, pulling the strings in what you understand to be your maths, media, events. You, as quote-unquote consumers of that information, are the grand majority. You can stir the energy vibration in a very different direction if you choose to. This invitation lies on the table for all of you. When you ask us, how can I? assist somebody else to, quote-unquote, stay away, perhaps, from the idea of the fear narrative when it comes to ET contact and disclosure, we would say, allow them their journey. Understand that if fear gets triggered in one or another person, it gets triggered in them for some reason. It is 
a stepping stone on their journey of getting to know themselves better. Perhaps we would say that the most soothing way to be present and to be a gift for them is to be there with them as they are going into those sensations, those emotions and negative belief systems. Perhaps if they feel they can trust you, you can go into a dialogue and ask them, why does this scare you? What kind of ideas do you have when it comes to extraterrestrial contact and so forth? Open up the dialogue further than it has been opened up so far for most of you. Explore and be there for them. Be in your own integrity, in your own state of unconditional love and inner knowingness and radiate that energy vibration by simply being in it and being there for them as a friend, hearing what they have to say, allowing them, in a sense, taking them by the hand, allowing them some presence in their journey down into that dark basement where those suppressed beliefs are that make it all look so gloomy and dark as they believe it is. Because it is only because certain negative belief systems were already hidden there, hiding there in that basement, you could say, of their psyche, that such negative narratives find a landing ground in these people. They are susceptible to these ideas because there were things inside of them that still want to be seen. So the most loving thing that you can do is be there for them as they step into that basement, explore what's in the dark, and with your assistance, if they choose to take it, find where the light switch is and discover that there is really nothing to be afraid of, whether you are looking at storylines that are woven around what other humans can do to humans, or storylines woven around the idea of what ETs might do to Earth. There really, when it comes down to it energetically, is no difference. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, thank um, you. That um, I think, you know, what we're doing here is, is uh, we're trying to, we are having the conversation and, and we're seeing it from as many different perspectives. So when someone who may not be at the awareness of, or have had the conversation as deep as we've had it, comes to us, we can really uh, explore it from any angle and um, have the tools that we need to have that conversation. Like you said, yes. um, I think that's what these interviews and these conversations we're doing now are sort of prepping us for the uh, future conversations to be had. Yes. And thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's a conversation I enjoy quite, quite uh, dearly. <laughs> This is why it is reflected back to you by so many. You see the confirmation of your own excitement, in a sense, reflected back to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so with, with that, uh, continuing on, so, say, disclosure, ETs, uh, the Yael, how uh, we, we sort of touched on this with Widika earlier, but how is the idea of the hybrid children with the current version of the IEL, are you, are you still the, the keepers of the children as a race? Oh, as we explained previously for us just a moment ago, in our earlier conversation, we are caretakers of the majority of them, but some like to travel and some are, you could say, navigating their own direction, not necessarily tied to our species so much. They explore, mm. they can stay at Pleiadian caretakers. They can explore different parts of the universe in groups on their own or with another guiding, you could say, quote unquote, parental being with them. There are many who choose to explore in that way, who wish to, from their own excitement, study specific species. And there is no more effective way to study a culture, as you may know yourself, than to have yourself be emerged in it. So mm. some 
with that. But yes, the majority still is with us. I see. And is there still plans for them to come to Earth and interact with us? There is still that possibility and probability. Yes. Is it a little bit less than when we talked before? Or is it sort of on the same same type of probability? This is a tricky question because the answer depends per individual listening in. Understand that if we tell you the chances have grown overall, that this may be true for some of the people listening to this particular co-creation and recording at some point in time or right now, and it may not be true for others. So we can't actually say it has moved up or down the scale in that way. It is not black and white like that much more relevant. Would it be for us to reflect back to you that you all do really create your own version of reality and that there are individuals amongst you listening in right now who have a higher probability of seeing that idea come to pass in this lifetime than others, some for whom it is more relevant than for others. I see. Um, how about uh, we're talking about different races and different ideas of different ET races that humanity is interacting with? Uh, recently in my research and in my exploration, a big part of the story is reconnecting to the version of ourselves from Lemuria and this ancient time uh, where um, we went through this, the evolutionary stages, I guess, before the fall and, and a portion of these beings went in, in, into inner earth and continued their spiritual evolution, specifically talking about the beings in like, say, Telos or Shambhala and um how does the Ayel interact with these beings, or are, is the Ayel actually these beings? You are asking if we are them? Uh, or do you interact with them, or, or is an aspect of you part? Because obviously, if you're part of us, you got to be a part of them, because if we're, you know, we evolved from them, um, how does that all work? If you... If you look at it from that angle, then mm -hmm. yes, you could say that there is a genetic relationship. We are not literally them. Just as you, right now, your generation on the planet today, mm -hmm. you are you. You are uniquely you. You are perfectly, even though perhaps for some people it may not seem to be that way, but you are perfectly equipped for the evolutionary stages that you are currently traveling through individually and collectively. But if you would, for instance, turn the clock back, say only 50 years, that collective had an entirely different energy vibration. So you can literally say we are them. In that sense, we are on a very different vibrational wavelength. Mm. You could say okay. in orientation, but we are aware of their presence and their love for where you are now and there you could say offerings of guidance to your species where you are today as many species physical and non-physical but multidimensionally are right now offering their reflections to humanity to if you wish to take these gifts guide you somewhat through the very interesting you could say labyrinth that you are currently finding your way through. In in regard, so in, in regard to the inner earth beings, are they one of these races that you mentioned could be one of our first contact races? From the inner earth is what yes. you meant? Yes, correct. The inner earth beings, in a sense, our understanding of what that is, you know, ancient Lemurians, ancient versions of humanity. You know, it's we've we've heard that they also have ships and can fly around. Do they um, are they part of this disclosure potential? In a sense, you could say that anything multidimensionally connected to you, interacting with you, or otherwise put, 
anything multidimensional that is aspect of you, your own greater self, is in the process of disclosing itself to you. It okay. may come from several directions at once, at some point, for some people. It may seem as if their awareness of such higher dimensional realms that appear to be in your earth, but not literally are there. Right, right. And the contacts with extra dimensionals such as ourselves may come for some simultaneously, for others from one direction mostly, and so forth. You will travel along the route of least resistance for yourself. You will allow into your version of reality the reflections that you can use on your individual journey most effortlessly that you can apply, implement, integrate in your own way if you choose to. For the collective, at this point, the idea of looking at the stars, looking up and receiving information from quote-unquote beyond the planet mm -hmm. has its own value, its own flavor. It has its own symbolic meaning as in many ways there has been, of course, a type of tradition in your more mainstream history of choosing to condemn that idea and ignore it and deny it and initially make movies that make that always seem to be the enemy and so forth. Now this is changing, this is changing. And that transformation process, even in your movie industry, is reflecting back to you the opening of the hearts, the remembrance, the journey that so many of you are now choosing to have unfold within themselves new narratives, new understandings, a broader horizon. And so in that sense, you may perhaps understand that for a lot of people, the idea of popping that specific illusion, that specific non-existing boundary between yourselves and the stars, because you are eventually all one, has more momentum going to be, let's say, investigated and researched and in some cases be pushed in a certain narrative, if only to get the attention to move into that direction so that you can explore it further together in your own way and with free speech as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of extra dimensionals quote unquote, coming from your own planet, from the ground, from the earth, it has its own flavor, it has its own symbolism, and it will be relevant for some people, but right now, in the gauging of the energy vibration of your population, we see that the momentum is strongest in exploring the idea of people from the stars the topic of ETs and UFOs or UAPs, however you choose to call them. And then this may eventually, the inner earth information may eventually also come to the surface, but it will be a different route of explanation. Mm -hmm. It has a different level of momentum and it right now speaks to a more select group. But eventually, all will be out in the open. Mm. That too. Your history will be remembered. <laughs>